Hey guys, it's Joanne here and I'm back in my kitchen again and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my pan fried wild caught haddock. Gluten free and it's good for you. So stay tuned. So I get my wild caught haddock uh, for the most part at Aldi's and they come in a frozen packet and it says right on there wild caught haddock and it's skinless and boneless. Sorry for the shadow. The size is 16 ounces and they're individually wrapped. So the first thing I do is I take a pot of cold water and I actually put the individual pieces inside of in, inside of the wrapping and I just let them dethaw. If you're going to dethaw them you can do this. This is what I like to call the fast dethaw method. You can also take them out the night before, put them in your refrigerator and let them you know dethaw out in the refrigerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these dethaw and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. While those are dethawing, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one egg and I prefer to use the organic brown eggs and these eggs are the hens are fed a vegetarian diet and they're raised uh, naturally without any antibiotics so that's the key to having some good eggs in your body is to make sure you get the nice organic eggs and I pretty, pretty much normally can use one egg for this for the egg wash Sometimes I might need another one, but looking at the size pieces that were in this package, that I think one will do for today. And we're just going to come over here, and I'm just going to simply crack the egg. And of course, again, this is Joanne's kitchen. You guys know there's a mess here. We got to pick out any shucks that you may have left in there. And this shuck is going to be difficult. There we go. Got the shuck. Okay. I'm going to get rid of these. And I'm literally just going to whip this up. I'm not... <laughs> the dog is... <laughs> the dog thinks I'm making scrambled eggs. But I'm just going to mix this up so you can have a nice egg wash. Ta-da! In this tank container here, I am going to make the breading. And for the breading, I use Bob's Red Mill uh, Superfine Almond Flour. You can also get the almond meal that is a little bit thicker if you want. But I use this in place of uh, breadcrumbs. And I don't have any precise measurements. I just literally kind of pour it in depending on it's probably even too much and there's a little there's some little chunks in here but okay that looks like it'll be good into this is also going to go our spices and I like to use garlic powder this is just like a little palm full of garlic powder Gonna add some coarse crack, coarse pepper. It's about 10 twists. I'm gonna add some of my favorite Himalayan sea salt. About seven of those. Then we're gonna add a little, just a little cayenne pepper for a kick. My husband likes stuff a little spicy. I'm going to add in a little palm full of parsley, dried parsley, just a little bit of basil, and onion powder. Can't see that. Onion powder. Probably about that much onion powder. So after we got all the spices in, 
mix this up. And now this should be pretty much ready. For the bread. Awesome. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to show you the example for a couple of these, but now that these have dethawed, I'm going to cut open the bag, take out the fish, and I'm going to carefully rinse it with cold water just to make sure there's nothing else left on there. I'm going to carefully rinse it, and then I'm going to carefully squeeze out any excess water. And I'm going to show you how to continue to do that. And I'm going to do it with this one too. Again, cutting open the plastic. And with these fillets from Aldi's, the one thing I recognize, or the one thing I found out, is that they come in different sizes so like this one is the fishtail this is pretty thin here and it gets thicker here and then there's other pieces that are a little bit thicker okay so now the next thing you're going to do and this is a continuation of the drying process is we're going to take paper towels and we're just going to carefully pat dry and try to pull out as much of the moisture as you can. And once you have, you know, the moisture, if you still think there's more moisture, you just grab another paper towel, flip it on the next paper towel, throw that one out, and you just do the same thing. Again, you, you wanna try to get as much moisture out of the fish as possible because this is going to help it crisp up better when you go to uh, fry it in the pan that we're going to use. So this one is looking pretty good right now. Set that there. And now we're going to get our bigger piece. Let's see. Here's our bigger piece that we have. And see, there's still a lot of water in this thicker section. So I'm really going to focus on pulling that out. And then I'm going to grab another paper towel, do the same thing. Okay, and then I'm going to continue to do this for my other pieces. And I will be right back with you and two shakes of a weasel. Okay, so now we have, so these are the four pieces that came inside this package. This is the pretty, pretty typical for the type, the size that you get. It's enough to feed a family of four, depending on how big of the pieces that you normally get for your serving. So according to the back of the package, it says serving size is considered a four ounce and it says that there is approximately four servings per container, which is exactly what they do, is they give you four pieces of fish, which are approximately equal four ounces. Some of them are thicker than others, and so these are the ones you want to make sure are thawed, you know, thawed all the way through. Um, these are the first ones that we're going to put on for, for frying and getting them battered. But the first thing we need to do is we need to start off by putting inside, I actually fry the fish in organic virgin coconut oil. And whenever you're getting coconut oil like this, you wanna look for the cold press and unrefined. That's the best, um, the best type. I get mine pretty much anywhere. I get it at Aldi's. This container I got at Trader Joe's. Any grocery store you will find it, but coconut oil has so many, many uses. Uses I am using coconut oil daily. I use it, I use it as a lotion. I use it as a... I could do a whole separate video if you want me to. Leave a comment below if you want to see a video of me using coconut oil 
throughout the day, throughout my day, how many times I use coconut oil. So we're gonna open this up. And we're gonna get a spoon. And we're gonna start off by taking a nice rounded spoonful. And I'm gonna pop it over here inside of my fry pan, which I don't wanna move you guys over to yet, but I'm just gonna get this coated, get this melted. And get that heated up and the good thing about coconut oil as I mentioned in one of my other videos is that if you got stuff left over on your spoon you can just rub it on your arms and use it as lotion <laughs> you might as well you might as well take advantage of it when you can right now it's breading time so we're gonna take each fillet and we are going to start with the bigger ones first and we are going to dip it and dredge it in the egg Make sure it gets fully covered in the egg. Try to drop off as much of it as possible, as much of the egg. Put it in the almond flour. Flip it, and I usually try to sprinkle it on. I try to put as much as possible, getting all the sides. And so now we have piece number one done. I gotta get a plate. No fancy plates here, guys. No fancy plates here. <laughs> Told you this isn't a cooking show. But everybody wants to see how I made my fish. I put a picture of this fish up on Instagram, by the way. We actually make this. Do another one. We actually make this about once a week, if not twice a week. We try to get fish in a couple of times a week. We used to always eat out on Fridays. Fridays used to be our fish night and we would get fried fish at the local fish market and they do have a broiled option but honestly the broiled option I think had so much other like oils and stuff on there you don't know what they use for seasonings it's just so much better to prepare your foods at home um, I know it takes additional time guys but uh, I thoroughly enjoy it I'm really enjoying making these foods and knowing that we are saving money even though we're <laughs> even though we're eating so much better we are not eating out all the time so we're not spending money on takeout and we're not buying extra snacks and soda so it really does counteract the price of buying the nutritious food and buying you know the supplements that I have to take that makes the body feel good. See, so this one egg was plenty. We still have extra egg. And then we're gonna put, this as the last piece. And actually, I think I did pretty good. I think I did pretty good with the coating. Making sure it all got covered with coating. And I'm just taking some and sprinkling on. So now, the nut, you know, the almond flour really, in my opinion, kind of brings a n different nuttiness to the to the fish. I'm going to get these out of the way because this stuff drive, messes drive me crazy. I should say messes in the kitchen drive me crazy. Wipe this down. Don't worry, I'm not going to drop the fish. I bet y'all, you guys are saying, don't drop the fish. <laughs> Rinse this off. By now, I think we're pretty much set with bringing this, bringing you over to the fry zone. Welcome to the fry zone. And over here, I actually have a pot steamer ready to steam. I'm going to steam some broccoli. We're going to have some broccolis, and I do have some red potatoes that I already cooked the night before that we are gonna have for our other accoutrements, some red potatoes. So this is feeling like it is ready to roll. Yeah, it feels like it's hot enough. I did end up putting one more, uh, like half a tablespoon in there, and I might add some more coconut oil as we go along, just so that the fish does not stick. You know how that goes along the way. So we're gonna start off with the thicker items first. 
Okay, so we're going to start off with this piece. And see, so you can hear that sizzle. That's a good sign. I'm going to put this piece right here. And then we're going to put, let's see, this one here. And then we're going to put this one right in the middle. Okay. And we're going to let that go for, let's time this. And in the meantime, I'm going to cook up my broccoli. And we're just not going to touch this at all. We are going to let this just simmer. My shadow is probably in your way, right? Boy, it's hard. It's hard to film. It's been two minutes as I'm wiping up as I go along because I have to do that. Me. How's it looking, guys? Is it looking soup yet? You guys keep an eye on that for me for a minute. <laughs> and in the meantime, I prepped a plate with some paper towels so that we can put it off. Okay. I'm going to make sure we got the olive oil still going through there. All right, I have no idea how long that <laughs> how long that was off, but frying broccoli is over here red potatoes from last night we're just going to heat those up they're cut up red potatoes is what we use for our potato of choice and we have 16 seconds this is just about ready to turn i'm going to take this big one first and i'm going to make sure we got coconut oil to cover that area and then we're going to flip it over oh uh, yeah Nice and crispy. I'm going to pop a little bit. A little bit more of coconut oil in around. And then we're going to Let's see, I think I'm going to use my clippers. Sometimes it's easier to use my clippers. Maybe not. I kind of got this one stuck in. That looks really good. And we got this big one over here. Again, covering it up with coconut oil. Oh, we did drop a little piece of it, but that's okay. And then we got this nice big one in the center here. And I'm going to make sure before I flip it down. You always want to make sure coat it with coconut oil. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, there's an extra piece. Nummy, nummy, nummy. And then we're going to let that cook a few minutes. And we got, if you notice, we got broccoli that's steaming right here. Yum. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. See, and you can even see the one that's kind of cracked open a little bit, the thicker piece. You can even see how it's still starting to cook and get flaky in the center. You want to make sure that gets totally done. This one is going to be probably done first. Trying to stay out of your light so you guys can see this.
And the, honestly, I think the combination of the coconut oil and the almond flour really brings out the flavors in the fish and I think really just enhances enhances the meal. So I do recommend using coconut oil on this and not using maybe peanut oil would be good or sesame oil, but I do remember I don't recommend, you know, canola oil or olive oil in this case. Just for the taste of it, I think with fish, but that's just that's just me. And these look like they're just about done. So I'm going to turn these off back there. Seriously, these are these are already done. I mean, that's all those took were a few minutes to cook the broccoli. These are just about done. I think I'm going to take these, these two pieces off. And we're going to put them on the plate. And there's one piece. And we're going to let that kind of soak up some of the excess oil. I'm going to take this one off carefully, put that on. See how I said carefully and it didn't work out carefully. Then these two, these two we're going to flip one more time because they are thicker. And this, this size usually honestly does break off because of the fact that it's so thick and it is a frozen, but that's okay. It still gets eaten. One of the things we like to do with this fish too, if we have like one piece is usually left over, right? There's three of us that live at, there's three of us here now. So one's for Mike, one's for me, one's for my son, and then we have extra. And this extra one usually gets broken up into small pieces and we can use it for a quick snack. We can throw it on a salad. It's just like a really good, pure piece of protein that we can have to add to our food plan. So I'm just going to run over here and I'm going to check on the red potatoes quick. I'm just going to cut this one open to see if it's done. Okay, so that. Just a few more minutes and that will be perfect. And I'm going to take off and I do try to blot the top too to try to keep it as crispy as possible. And then we have this piece, which is the last piece, which is kind of a mess. It's not really for, the last piece is not a YouTube presentation piece. Let's just put it that way. So I'll be right back as I plate up the fish. So this is what we have for dinner today, guys. We have the fish, we have red potatoes, we have the broccoli. So this is what it looks like. So if you like these kind of videos, guys, please give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Joanne. Nice to meet you. If you're new, why don't you hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified as to when I upload new videos. And you can also follow me on all of my other social media. I am at Joanne Plans on Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope, and Twitter. You guys be awesome. Enjoy the rest of your day. And hey, let's get healthy in 2017. And I'm going to chat with you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.